Today we've got lots of exciting news to talk about. We've got the naming ceremony coming up for the brand new Sun Princess. Also an update on how the tendering situation is going with the Sun Princess. Also news coming in from Carnival, from Cunard. We're going to talk for a minute about new dining options coming to a princess ship. And at the end, stick around for a minute if you are considering coming with us to Antarctica or on any of our other group cruises. I'm getting so many emails with questions that I think I better talk about it here. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Saturday, it is April 20th of 2024, and let's start at the very top talking about the naming ceremony on the brand new Sun Princess. If you've been following along here, you've heard me talk about the fact that the Sun Princess is going to have her official naming ceremony on April 23rd. Now, the godmother for the Sun Princess has been announced. It's Hannah Waddingham, and she is a British actress. That's who they've chosen for the godmother and so they have a special ceremony that is very much stoked in maritime history and maritime tradition and so that is going to take place like I said on the 23rd but it is the day that the ship happens to be docked in Barcelona so all of the guests who are on board are going to be able to go into port of course go on excursions uh, I would say Barcelona is a very easy city to do your own Barcelona on your own and uh, so a lot of guests will maybe be off the ship they are not going to be departing Barcelona as shown on the schedule until 10 p.m. One of the Let's Go family members who is on board that ship, so thank you my dear, was so nice to send me the notice that they have passed out to all of the guests on board and I thought I would tell you the highlights. So they are having what they call Festival of the Sun to do with the naming ceremony. And so, first of all, um, starting at 3 p.m., they are going to have it so that you can have a cocktail, a photo opportunity, starting celebrations there in the piazza, and then um, from... Um, that's going to start at 3.15, sorry. There is going to be... Um, also a live simulcast of the whole um, program that they have where they actually do the naming ceremony that's going to start at 4.30. And although everyone is not going to be able to be in that actual location to witness that firsthand, they are going to be streaming that on screens in the piazza there. Remember that the new Sun Princess has that huge screen in the piazza, so they're going to stream it there. Also in the Princess Live Theater, as well as on the Movies Under the Stars screen. Alrighty, so that's going to take place. And then also at 7 p.m., they are going to have a festival um, performance that is going to be um, poolside there on the Lido deck, and that is also going to be streamed in the Piazza in Princess Live and also on Movies Under the Stars so that anyone who would like to watch it can do that. So it'll be fun to hear how everything goes with that. Now, um, you might remember recently we had the Carnival Jubilee was christened, and that made it so that guests who were actually coming aboard that day in that uh, port on turnaround day there had to be a little bit delayed on boarding the ship. And um, some venues were closed off during that day. Um, people that got on board let me know. And so O'Malley's on the Sun Princess is going to be closed from 3 to 4.30 on April 23rd. The Dome and Sea View Terrace there is going to be closed from 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. And then the Princess Arena will be closed from 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. So it'll be really fun to um, get some pictures of that um, and see how everything goes with that. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about that. I'm looking forward to hearing from our Let's Go family member who's on board and anyone else who hasn't contacted me yet who happens to be on board. Let us know how it goes. It just sounds like a lot of fun. The only time I've gotten to be on board for a naming ceremony is um, Gordon and I were invited to the naming ceremony for the Celebrity Beyond, and it was absolutely wonderful. Instead of just doing it um, only for a day in port as part of another cruise, it was actually part of a um, really special cruise that they did when they brought the Celebrity Beyond to the United States. And uh, they they really went out of their way to make it such a special experience. So I'm expecting to hear good things about the christening of the Sun Princess. Now, yesterday I let you know that the they canceled nine cruises on the Star Princess. So the inaugural that Gordon and I were going to be on on there for August 4th and some of our Let's Go family members with us has been canceled. It's been moved to October 4th. 
And along with that, um, people have been receiving their emails and what is going to happen to their voyage, how it'll be handled, um, is dependent on pretty much what voyage you were on. Like ours, they said they would just be moving us over to the October 4th voyage. Now, um, one of you who was so kind that happened to be booked on the transatlantic was kind enough to send me an email with what you received from Princess. So I thought you all might like to hear about it. Now, it's it's kind of, I would say, the cruise that has had the greatest impact other than being canceled. That's a pretty big impact. But if the cruises that are still going to sail, um, this is the one that really has changed a lot. That transatlantic was due to take place from Southampton. And now that um, sailing is going to originate in Barcelona. Barcelona is absolutely beautiful. It's a nice place to sail from. And I am really glad that they made the announcement now so that people have time to make, um, when they buy their tickets, their airline tickets, they will be able to buy them to the correct place. If you're not familiar with how airline tickets work, they are not available now for um, to buy if you're gonna fly in October of 2025. They come out much closer to a year from when you're going to be flying. So at least everyone has a heads up on when they are going, um, where they're going to need to be sailing from. And instead of that being a, let's see, it was going to be a 16 day voyage. It is now going to be a 14 day voyage. So let me know what you think. Gordon and I are still um, mulling over what we're gonna do. We have another cruise scheduled that was going to depart before that inaugural cruise has ended. So we've got to decide what we're gonna do with ourselves. And I think we kind of know, and we'll let you know when we decide for sure. Hopefully we will know by our Monday Night Live what we're going to do and we'll tell you. A really important thing I do want to tell you though is if you have been booked on one of the voyages that has been canceled or moved over, you need to make sure that you let Princess know by May 10th, okay? So you should have received an email. So if you don't see an email, search through your email, check your spam, and make sure that you've got your email because there's a link that you click on. It says this form by May 10th. Click on that link and you need to let them know what you're going to do because otherwise, like in our instance, they said they would be moving us over to the October 1st sailing. Um, if they move you over, that's where you're gonna be. <laughs> so make sure, you know, you could still cancel and get your money back. But it's a really good idea to let them know which option you want to do so you can have a full refund. You can be moved over if that's an option for the sailing that you were on. Or you can go ahead and leave the money that you have paid thus far. And this far out, it's just your deposit. You can leave that with Princess. They'll turn it into a future cruise credit. And then you get $100 of onboard credit per cabin on the next cruise that you book with Princess. You just have to keep in mind that you need to book it by November 30th of 2024 and sail by November 30th of 2025 with that. Alrighty, now the next thing we're going to talk about is dining. Now when we were just on the Discovery Princess, Gordon and I really enjoyed getting to dine in Rudy's. The catch by Rudy's was excellent. It was excellent and I look forward to dining there again the next time we're on the Discovery Princess. That will be um, at the end of July is the next time we will be on board that ship. But one of the things that stood out to us, and I showed you some video of it, and I'll get Gordon to tuck some in here, is that it is really very much in, in an area that is open to the piazza. Um, you, and it's close to where people are walking um, like by. They can come up and generally, I only saw two people walk through the rest, restaurant that weren't um, dining there um, during the time that we were there. But you can hear the music from the piazza very loudly. There were times that it was really loud. We couldn't have talked to each other. And so we didn't at that point. But they are making a change. And so there are a couple of things here to know about. First of all, um, the dining um, people I heard this is a rumor when we were on board, but I wasn't sure. But now I've seen it so many places, I really do think it's going to happen. That the Sabatini's there, which is down, um, it's in an enclosed restaurant area right there on deck five, um, right off the piazza, kind of by like the piazza's here and guest services is over here. It's just in this little hallway and it's its own restaurant, like a regular restaurant. That is going to become Rudy's, and then Sabatini's is going to go up there and be where Rudy's um, is right now. So let me know if you see that. I've heard different things. So the Discovery Princess is supposed to go in for a dry dock um, at the end of October. It's like the time we get done with our cruise on her, um, if we decide to do that instead of the Star Princess inaugural. Um, she is going to go into a dry dock there in Singapore. Some people say the switch is going to happen then. Some people say that that switch is 
is going to happen much sooner. Um, so those of you who sail on this uh, Discovery Princess, let us know what you're hearing and let us know what you're seeing. Right now, the guests who are on the Discovery Princess, one of you was so kind to send me the notice. Um, it says, Perfections in Progress in the Piazza. And it says, Welcome guests. At, at Princess, we're always working to take your onboard experience to the next level. It says O'Malley's is coming soon to the Discovery Princess, and we want to let you know that there will be construction in the piazza. The Salty Dog Gastro Pub and the Gelateria will be closed during your cruise as we make new way for this new offering, but we expect the disruption disruption and the noise to be minimal and then they go on to say that you'll be able to get the desserts that you usually were able to get in the gelateria there you'll be able to get it up in the world place um the world marketplace buffet area and it's going to be in the area where you usually would get your juice so you can still get those ice cream things if you would like to um and guests who are on board the discovery princess say that indeed the gelateria area there is all boarded up so they're already starting to to work on this. Now, um, the other thing to note is that there in the Salty Dog Gastro Pub, that is not only where they served that food, but that is where they did the pop up crab shack. And we got to experience that when we were on board. That is very much worth the money. The cover charge is $40 a person, and the seafood was very fresh and it was excellent. So if you get the chance to do that and you really enjoy seafood, you might want to do it. But anyway, instead of running that pop-up in the Salty Dog Gastropub area there, they're going to do it in the Crown Grill for the foreseeable future until they get everything done. So O'Malley's Pub is coming. Everyone that has eaten it at O'Malley's says that the food is really good. Um, I have not eaten at one yet. Um, every time we have been on board a ship that's had one, it's been really, really busy. When we were on um, the Sun Princess, they have one. And during the time that we were on board, it was closed a lot of the time. And so I don't know, quite frankly, is if they weren't quite up to speed yet with it or if they were just having some private functions when we were looking at eating there. Um, and it was at lunchtime usually is when we were thinking of doing that or in the afternoon. So we have not had the pleasure of doing that yet. But everyone says that it's usually pretty good. So put in the comments if you've eaten at O'Malley's yet, what you think about the change in restaurants. And really, what do you think about them switching where Sabatini's and the Catch by Rudy are. Let me know what you think. I'm excited about it. Um, but then Sabatini's is going to be noisy. You know what I mean? So we'll just take what we get and we'll be fine with it. <laughs> so um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is those tenders on the Sun Princess. So ever since the Sun Princess started sailing, she has been canceling, they have been canceling, the Princess has been canceling a lot of her calls in Santorini. And then we were, they were scheduled to have a stop in Couture Montenegro and that was canceled and they ended up calling in Bar Montenegro instead. So the port call calls in Santorini have been being replaced by port calls in Hania Crete, that port right there, and it is it is a docked port, as is Bar Montenegro. So back and forth, we have heard different things. When we were on board the Sun Princess, we heard that there was trouble with tenders being able to dock on the Sun Princess. And so fast forward, um, to my knowledge, there have been two. And so correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely, let me know if you've been on the Sun Princess and you've called in Santorini. I think there have been two times that they have had um, the Sun Princess be able to um, call in Santorini. And so I thought it was really interesting. Several, several of you have let me know who are on this sailing that it was a topic of quite a bit of discussion whether or not it was going to work out to use um, the docking platform that they have built built for the Sun Princess to be able to use the tenders. So if you're not familiar, it depends on the port that you're going to, whether or not they are going to use local tenders, like local boats, lo um, and some of them are pretty big, some of them are pretty small, or if they're just going to use the ones for the ship or a mixture of both. And a lot of it will depend on the rules of that port. Santorini is a port that for as long as I can remember, you they have had to use the local tenders. And I'll be honest, I actually really like that. Um, I've ridden on a variety of um, tender boats, as they call them there, in Santorini. And my favorite was this wooden, it wasn't a ship, but it was pretty big. 
and he was absolutely beautiful and so it was really special to get to sail on that but the other boats that we have taken back and forth have been just great so I wanted to make sure that you all know to expect that they are not going to be getting the tenders down so it is going to be a big deal if everything is going to be able to match up to um, help unload and unload passengers there so if you're on board let me know what you're hearing but it sounds like this might be a problem for a while now another important thing to know with that is it really depends as well when you go to Santorini if you are just on a disembarkation tender and you're going over they're going to take you over where you're going to be able to take the um cable car up or if you want to walk up the hill or they have the donkeys if you would like to ride a donkey those are the different options to get up and down the hill there in Santorini if you book an excursion with Princess or with whatever cruise line you are on and you're going to end up on a bus they are going to take you it's actually like as you face that um, the cable car there it's down to your left a little bit they're going to take you there and they'll have the buses there Here's something to think about though. The last time that we were there, um, they were having a hard time getting the buses up and down the hill. I'm not really exactly sure why, but people in our excursion had to walk clear to the top of the hill. And I felt kind of bad because for some of the people, it was kind of hard for them to be able to make it up the hill. It would have been much better for the bus to come down. It's a pretty steep hill though. So I don't know if the driver was nervous about navigating it or what. But I just kind of wanted to give you a lay of the land there in Santorini, let you know how things work and let you know that from what we've heard it sounds like this might be a problem for a little while so if any of you've gotten any inside information on the situation there let us know I would really appreciate hearing from you and thank you to those of you who let us know how everything is going so far uh, let's talk about Cunard for a minute and I think it's kind of fun to talk about Cunard and think about timelines since we have just received the word that this delivery of the Star Princess is going to be delayed and um the brand new Queen Anne just yesterday was officially received by Cunard Cruise Line uh, there from the Fincantieri shipyard. They say it's in Venice. It's kind of in Venice. It's up and over a little bit. Um, and uh, it was. it's a really special day when a cruise line officially um, receives their cruise ship. So the brand new Queen, Queen Anne is going to hold 3,000 passengers. She's got some dining venues on board that they have not had before. So it's going to be really fun for people who get to try those. And I was especially looking forward to hearing from those of you who have been on Cunard before. And now you are going to be trying the new Queen Anne. This, uh, the addition of Queen Anne to the fleet marks the first time since 1999 that Cunard is going to have four ships sailing at the same time. So you've got the Queen Victoria, the Queen Elizabeth, and the Queen Mary II. And so it's really fun that we'll have four queens sailing there with Cunard. And it really makes me excited to try it out. Here's what I'm thinking about with the timeline though. So it was April 19th when they took ownership and May 3rd is when her inaugural is going to sail. So she came from the Monfalcone, um, Monfalcone Italy there in the Fincantieri shipyard. And she is going to be sailing over to Southampton to be ready to begin that inaugural voyage with um, guests on board. So that's basically two weeks, okay, 14 days there. And when you think about when Princess received the Sun Princess, they received her on Valentine's Day. I won't forget that on February 14th and her first sailing started on February 28th. So I've kind of had in my mind that we need to keep an eye on how everything is going with ships and cruise lines clearly need a, about at least two weeks from when they receive a ship to being able to go ahead and start sailing with paying passengers. Tell me if you've noticed any other trends with that and tell me as well, is Cunard on your list of cruise lines to try? If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, will you please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and tell your friends about us. Also, if you appreciate my updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? We really appreciate your support, so thank you very much. The next thing up here is Carnival, and I'm going to talk about this because we have had, um, like last week I mentioned in our live, and if you are not in our Facebook group, you should come and join us if you do Facebook. If you don't do Facebook, that's okay, of course, but if you do, you should come and join us. It's Let's Go Travel tips. One of our Let's Go family members was so kind to do a post and he talked a lot about casino offers are so big right now. People are talking about casino offers so he was kind enough 
have to post a lot of information that hopefully would be helpful for people that are thinking about doing that. Now, um, so fast forward for a minute here to the news that we have received from Carnival this week. A couple of things in the headlines. First of all, um, I came across this, a couple of stories about this and I find it really interesting. So when um, passengers sail on cruise ships, they generally need to be at least 21 years of age to have an alcoholic beverage. That's just the date um, on a lot of the major cruise lines. I'm not going to say all because I don't know for sure, but on a lot of the major cruise lines, you need to be 21 to have a drink. Now, sometimes they will call it a port where the legal age there is 18. So when the guest is on shore and the legal age is 18, then that means they can have an alcoholic beverage if they want to. But it's really important that they observe the rules while they are on board the ship and follow the rules there. However, when a passenger on board a ship wants to use the casino, generally it is 18 years of age that they have to be in order to play um, in the casino. Interestingly enough though, a lot of land-based casinos require guests to be 21 years of age. And so first of all, that's a really important thing to know if you think you're going to play in the casino or allow um, someone in your family or whoever to um, play in the casino or to have an alcoholic beverage. It's really important that they know those ages so that you don't do anything you're not supposed to or have an unfortunate, um, you know, do something you shouldn't and you didn't realize. But here is another note I want to let you know about um, gambling and it came up a lot with John Hield. John Hield was on the Carnival Luminosa, which is running that transatlantic from Australia. And um, there were passengers on board who were clearly playing cards and exchanging, as they say, large sums of money. And it's really important to know this, that when you're on board a ship, it is against the rules to um, gamble with dice or with money. Did you know that? So if you want to do that with your friends, the cruise ship isn't the place to do that. If you want to gamble, play games for money, use dice, the place to do that on a cruise ship is in the casino. Okay, I thought that was really an important clarification for anybody that wanted to know about that. Um, sometimes I think things um, just come up that we never even thought about before. And so I really appreciate all of you being here with me today. If you've got any questions about cruising, let me know, put it in the comments and I'll cover it. Now I said I would talk for a minute and go over a couple of questions that I keep seeing in my email about group cruises. Um, first of all, if you would like to be in our group cruises, you need to go ahead and book your sailing with me. That's just how we do it. That's how people who do groups do it. I put a lot of work and effort and, and expense into my preparation, and so that's how we do that. Uh, if you want to join our group, there's some of the things that we do together as a group is we'll, on that very first day, we're going to have a meet and greet so that you can get your shirt, your schedule of, of events and everything. Every evening we will have a set aside dining time. It will be the same every night for the cruise. The first night we'll go to the main dining room and they'll show us where our tables are. And after that, you just walk in at the dining time and sit down. If you would like to join us every evening for dinner, we'd love to have you. And if you want to join us some nights and not other nights, or, or you never want to join us, that's okay. We also will have on our schedule of events, some activities that really stand out. We're going to make sure that we list the enrichments so that no one misses those. Um, but then if people want to go together, we can. We can also go separate. But on the sea days, we will have meet and greet time set aside so that we can um, get together and visit or play games and just have a really nice time together. Also, a lot of times after we get done with dinner, you know, people will say, oh, let's go to the show and whoever wants to go will go together. It's just a really nice way to get to go know other people to have someone to go with if you're on your own and it's a really sweet experience. Really, the bonds that we made um, on our group cruises are really special. We had a couple of couples with us on the Eclipse cruise that came with us on our very first group cruise when we were on Holland America last um, here in Alaska and it was it was like seeing dear family again. We were really happy to have them with us. We have Let's Go family members who came with us on the Northern Lights cruise and as I went to book them yesterday, they were wanting to know who else was coming that had been with us on that cruise and it is just the sweetest thing. And so 
we have the dream team coming on the Antarctica cruise. It's going to be um, epic as far as the scenery and where we are going on this beautiful earth to see things, but it is also going to be a magnificent experience on board with the people who are going. Those of you that have signed up already to come with us, um, you're amazing. And I have, I'm the one that has the pleasure of getting to talk with all of you and you all are amazing. We're going to have a great time because because of who all of you are. So I am really looking forward to this. And I just wanted you to know um, that we really appreciate your support and are so glad you're coming with us. We're humbled um, by you and are so grateful. So thank you. Now, I, if you have any other questions, just don't hesitate to put them in the comments or send me an email. Let's go travel tips at gmail.com. And I'll see you here again tomorrow. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.